In this video, we're going to build a boom gate simulator using an ultrasonic sensor. So in this simulation, I've got the final product to show you how it all works, and then I'll go back and start rebuilding it bit by bit, including the code. So we have our servo down the bottom here that simulates the boom gate opening and closing. And now we've introduced a new part called an ultrasonic sensor. So an ultrasonic sensor can determine how far away an object is from it. So up here, I'm simulating an object, this little round circle here, and this green area you can see is the area within which the sonic, ultrasonic sensor can detect objects. So if my object is outside of that area, then the sensor will just read back the maximum volume, the maximum distance that it can actually read from. So that tells me there's nothing in there. When an object gets within the sensor distance, the sensor will determine that distance by calculating how long it takes to send a signal, bounce off the object, and return to be sensed for the sensor to pick up the signal has returned. So if an object becomes closer, then it will take less time for the signal to reach the object, bounce, and be detected again back by the sensor. Now I've coded this so that once the object comes within 150 centimeters, you can see we've got measurements down here, we've got inches and we've got centimeters. Once an object comes within 150 centimeters, then our boom gate will open up to allow the car out. So let's move this down to under 150 centimeters. And you can see the boom gate opened. Now as long as I remain in that area, the boom gate will remain open. So this is very much like when you're in a car park and you're leaving. When you approach the boom gate, if it's an automatic release, letting people out automatically, once you reach the sensor, the gate will open. Once you pass through, it'll allow a short amount of time to make sure that the car has exited and then the boom gate will start to close again. But if something breaks that sensor again, it'll automatically open again straight away. So once I move this object back past the 150 centimeters, there'll be a delay and then the gate will close. And so now the gate has closed. To start wiring up our boom gate simulator, we'll start from this point where we already have the servo connected because we did that in a previous video. The only difference is we've changed the pin number that we've connected the data to, so we've left space up here to put our sensor. So to connect our sensor, we'll look for the ultrasonic distance sensor. Now you'll see there's two of them here. There's one with three pins and there's one with four pins. We're going to use the one with four pins because it's simpler to use. The reason being is that the pins have a power and they have a ground and then there's a dedicated pin on the four pin distance sensor which is when you can say okay start sending out signals and then we've got a second pin where we can read in the timing it took for that signal to bounce back. If we use the three pin sensor we have to continually change the single pin. We have to keep swapping between sending a signal and then reading the distance. So you can use one pin to do both operations, but it complicates the code a little bit. So we're going to use the four pin version and keep things nice and simple. So we'll place that up here. Now I'm going to connect the trigger, which is when we say, okay, I want you to now send out a beam. I'm going to connect that to pin 10. So whenever we want to say, okay, I want you to start now sending out signals, that's the pin we'll use. So I'll color that pin different to the power so we can recognize what it is. You can pick whatever you want. I'll go with blue for triggering. And then on port nine, I'll connect that to echo, which is to read the time it took for that signal to reach the object and bounce back. And I'll color that brown. Now the last two pins are your power. VCC is your five volt power. So I'll bring that down and connect it to our positive rail there. Color that red. And ground is obviously connecting to a ground pin. So we'll connect that to ground on our board and we'll color that black. Now that's essentially all the wiring you need. You can see we've got power to our boom gate, to our servo, and we've got a data connection so we can write to pin three to tell it to move to a certain position and then to move back to its original position. 
And then for our sensor here, we've got the ground and we've got the 5 volt attached. And we also have two data pins, one to trigger the sensor to start sending out signals. And then we've got this brown one here, the echo, to retrieve back the time it took for that signal to reach the object and bounce back.